<clears throat> thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, that you're in this place, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for presence, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for pouring out, Lord. Pouring out revelation in your word, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for changing us within, Lord. I surrender it all to you, Lord. I ask you, Holy Spirit, that you will. And I thank you that you are the guide in the word, Lord. Thank you that you bring forth conviction so that we may grow even deeper, even deeper into your presence, Lord. Closer to your heart. This is what I pray. Closer to your heart. Molded heart in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, so I'm going to start out today with... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, talking a little bit about um, the blessing of giving, and I am in First King uh, seventeen, First King seventeen, verse eight. <clears throat> then the word of the Lord came to him, Elijah, saying, "Arise, go to Sarapath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you." So he arose and went to Sarapath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there gathering sticks. Now this is part of the time when there was huge famine in, um, in Jerusalem. And he called to her and said, please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. Now, um, <laughs> he's a prophet and he's, he's coming to her and he's asking for water. He's asking for her to give him before, to, to bring him water, to give him water. And next thing is, and as she was going to get it, he called her, he called to her and said, please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So he's asking her to bring water and food. And he's asking of her to give him something in order for her to receive the blessing that the Lord has for her. It's a blessing for us when we are enabled to give before receiving. That's, the, that's a law in God's world. That's it. Um, and, um, and she's giving out of the very, very little that she had. Mm. And so much, uh, so very little that she's saying to him. So she said, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die because that was all that was left. So she gave everything that she had to the man of God. And she's not complaining here. She's just stating a fact. This is the situation. I don't have it. But what I do have, I'll give to you. Right? Such a huge blessing is on her way. She thought that she was going to die and her son was going to die, that they were going to die together. Now that's a huge famine, right? And Elijah said to her, do not fear. That's like God, right? Do not fear. Go and do as you have said. But make me a small cake from it first. Mm -hmm. Give something to me first. Mm -hmm. 
God is always asking us to give what we have so that he has something to work with, so that we're not attached to it. God only wants us to be attached to him. Bring it from it first. Let it be the first thing that you do. He's saying this is how you're receiving your blessing. Bring this to me first and bring it to me and afterward make some for yourself and your son. It's because God knew, the prophet knew in that sense, a uh, multiplication would take place. But God is always testing our heart, isn't he? Always testing our heart in that sense, and he's always purging our hearts, and he always wants us to stand more purged so that we can come closer to him, so he can pour out more blessing upon Amen. your life. Amen. That's what it's all about. Amen. Amen. It's all for you. Amen. It's all to receive the blessings that he has for you. Amen. You're sowing into your future. That's what she's doing right now. She's sowing into her future. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up. Now he's prophesying, right? The prophet. Nor shall the jar of, jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. Amen. This is three years. Mm. So she lived with the man of God. Think about that. A prophet in your house mm. that you can live with that hear the Lord. I mean, not everybody heard the Lord at that time. We have to remember that. So he was a blessed man from God. Whatever Elijah said, that was the word of the Lord. He never missed the word of the Lord. And he was in her house, and she thought that she was going to die, and her son was going to die. So he prophesied, and he's prophesying multiplication. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and her and her household ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. So she's sowing into this future. Now she has her life restored in the moment. I don't believe it was in constant overflow. I believe it was a day-by-day -day oil um, giving, uh, flower giving, right? Mm -hmm. I don't believe it just had oil. It doesn't say it, but I don't believe it had oil all over. Multiplication is in, it's more like in the now, right? So that was the now word. And she's constantly, and she gave, because she gave the, the man of God, the prophet, what he asked for, he, she gave him something to work with. Hmm. Yeah. And um, we have to remember, this was the last flower that she had. This was the last drop of oil she had. And she gave it to the prophet. She gave it to Elijah because he asked for it. This is the order of God of saying, this is the way of God of saying, this is how I am going to bless you. Yeah. This is the way. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to wait in sharing on the next, um, I don't want to share it all today, but we know that uh, her son was revived. But think about that. So she was prepared. God had spoken to her. Do you think maybe that she'd cry to the Lord? Mm. Oh, God, don't let me die. Mm. Oh, God, don't let my son die. Mm. Help me, oh, God. Mm. Yes, because God spoke to the prophet who came to her. Mm. God is always working um, and, and intertwining people together. Mm. That's the way of, you know, that's the law of God. This is how blessings are poured out. Now imagine that 
this. Imagine that she did not have a place. Imagine that she did not have a prophet to give to. Right? Imagine no church to give in. Right? You'll just be on your own, right? So in that sense, we have to know the importance of giving because by that we sow into our own future. Mm -hmm. It's a blessing for us. And we see this principle over and over and over in the Bible, over and over. And you know what? What we have is not ours anyway. <laughs> it's just... Let me just say that. It's not ours anyway, right? So that was a little, you know. So if you want to give to this ministry, you can look in the commentary. And there's a link there. And you can, you can tab on the link and you can give. And um, when you give, um, we appreciate it because um, that enables us to keep spreading the gospel, which is the most important thing that we could ever do here on earth. So... And it's for you to sow into your own future. That's what it's all about. I'm going to read on next week. So I am going to shift a little bit, but still in the same order, because I'm still going to talk about sacrifice. She was sacrificing. She was giving everything that she had. She gave it all up. And uh, she didn't even think about her son, this widow. She listened to the prophet. She was not, oh, I don't, you know, sometimes as a mother, you at least take care of your children, mm -hmm. right? You think about your children, but she didn't do that. She listened to the prophet, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just about listening and obeying. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. It doesn't matter how you felt. She probably was worried as she was doing it. Yeah. She's like us. Mm -hmm. She's a mother. Mm -hmm. She was probably worried. And, Okay, but I'm going to do it. doesn't say anything. Mm -hmm. She did not utter a word. She just did it. She just obeyed. Mm -hmm. And he prophesied that it, nothing would run dry mm -hmm. as long as there was a famine in the land. I'm going to continue reading that next week. So I'm moving on a little bit here into the word of more of today, so to speak. But it's still intertwined with the other part because... It's a still about giving in to uh, um, giving what we have in that sense. And I'm in John 10, and I'm going to read from verse 7. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I'm the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. That's why people were all, all over there were no leader, and uh, people were scattered all over. I am the door. I am the door. There is only one way in legally. That's what Jesus is saying. Mm -hmm. This is the legal door. That's why he talks about thieves and robbers, mm -hmm. but that, because that's illegal, mm -hmm. the way they come in. There, and there is only one door, and that's Jesus. Mm -hmm. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. Mm -hmm. Enters by me. Mm -hmm. And will go in and out and find pasture. Doesn't that sound nice? Yeah. Sounds like we can relax a little bit. <laughs> and go and eat. And know that he will take care of us. Can you hear that in the wording? Amen. Because the shepherd knows whether sheep yeah. can eat. Yeah. If sheep were just sheep without a shepherd, they would just run around. Mm. Mm. So by him, we will go in and out and find pasture. We will be in the shelter in the evening mm -hmm. because that's what they did have in the old times. They had kind of an open shed for the animals mm -hmm. for protection and then go out during the day and find pasture to eat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly to the max until it overflows. Abundantly is always a overflow of life. And that's of life in every sense and matter, in all area, right? Amen. This is the definition of Jesus. Amen. Life abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. This is my point today. Jesus invested with everything that he had And he invested with his own life. He did not invest with someone else's. He invested with his own life. Amen. Look to what Jesus re is a reaping. Mm. Us. Right? Mm. And his kingdom on earth. But a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. He breaks up the unison. Therefore, in order not to be a hireling, God's law states this fact that we need to invest with our lives, whatever that may be in the moment. It's a law of God. You cannot alter this. You cannot change it. I don't care if you like it. This is just the way it is because it's, we see it with Jesus. We have to understand more, you know, when a law is a law, you can't change it because you feel you don't like it. A law is not about feeling, you, right? It's about doing whatever it takes in that sense of God, what is God's law. Yes, it helps us. Yes, it blesses us when we do it because that's another of God's law, just as, as I started out. So it's connected in that sense, right? So whatever we do, we sow into the future, Whatever you give up on, wherever you give your life for someone, your life could be giving up on an opinion. Mm. Your life could be giving up on an argument, just wanting peace. Your life could be, you know, there are many things of giving up life. Mm. Life in the carnal. Not the life of Christ. Because Jesus, what he provides is the life that is life. I don't know how to, Right? Whatever is needed at that moment before we are the ones to be bound to people. So if we don't do it, we will be bound to people. By his investment in us, it gave him the authority needed to protect us. So if you wanna if you wanna walk in any kind of authority in that regard. The investment is give up on your own life. Because that's what Jesus did, right? He gave his life so that he could come and gain a higher life. And the higher life was that he conquered death. And in that, he carries all authority, right? So in order for you <laughs> to... To help to do anything and to sow into your own future, this is how you do it. People cost. It costs to be around people. And Jesus paid, we always, you hear this many times, Jesus paid the highest price. Yes, it costs to be around people. I'm just going to say it in a different way because we get, sometimes we get so used to hearing the same words, right? It kind of just sometimes passes by and we don't really even take it in. But it costs to be around people. 
And God will always send people to you at the moment when it's most inconvenient for you to talk with them because you have planned some other things for that day or you don't feel like it, or you don't want it, or whatever the reason may be, but it's all carnal. Mm -hmm. And God, that's another law. Mm -hmm. Hello? Mm -hmm. That he will do it at the moment when you don't feel like it. That's right. Because God has more in store for you. Because if those feeling of, I don't want it, are a hindrance, and you are led by them, you will fall. Can you see that? And by that, when Jesus came down on earth, he gave his life. So whenever we're in a situation, he invested with his life. We invest with our lives in the situations with people. And that gave him the authority, that gave him the mandate, because he died to it first. Yeah. Here's a great sentence the Lord spoke to me. And we are bound to him through the unison of sacrifice. If you want to win people over, this is the way. You give yourself. Whatever it takes in that regard. There is a unison of sacrifice. When you do this, you're operating under the law of God. And when you're doing that, you can be sure, as in 100,000%, there is a blessing on your way. That's the law of God. You might not see it right away. You might not see it next week. But you are sowing into your future. Mm -hmm. And you're winning people over for the gospel. That's what's most important. Mm -hmm. You're winning souls into God's house. Mm -hmm. This is the order. This is the way. So Jesus invested with his life. The good, shepherd give, the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Sometimes we read that sentence and only think about Jesus. Now, if you want to shepherd someone, this is the way. Can you see it? The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. He goes after the one who's lost. He goes out to gather the sheep. There is always someone, a Christian, Holy Spirit-filled Christian, can minister to. There is always someone that you're further on along the road, where you're further on along the road, right? And if you're just a newborn believer or a baby Christian, there are many people who are not saved. Mm -hmm. There's always someone, right, you can minister to. Mm -hmm. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. This is also talking to us. But a hireling, if your heart is not right, you will run I'm going to be very direct here. <laughs> but a hireling, someone who has his heart positioned on Christ, will leave the sheep. This we see in many churches. So, but a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he's a hireling and does not care about the sheep. So how, how, do you, how do you walk from before Christ we were hirelings? Let me just say that. So how do you move from being a hireling and being a shepherd? 
You give yourself away. This is the hard position of God. Do you understand that? Can you see it? And by that, we, we're, we're, not, we're not letting... It's interesting that the wolf, that Jesus uses this parable, that the wolf is coming. That means a hireling gets scared of things. He's moved by the fear of man. You know, you have a fear of man too within your own fear of man, within your own man, right? So it's not just outer, your own fear of man too, right? So it could be many layers of fear of man here. So whenever there's an attack, whenever fear arises, that's how you recognize if people are Holy Spirit filled. And that's how you recognize if you're Holy Spirit filled, Mm -hmm. that you don't leave the situation. Mm -hmm. I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and am known by my own. So when we become a shepherd for God, in that sense, <laughs> we, start to, we start to figure out through God, of course, we're not, you know, of course, through God. Through God, through the Holy Spirit, we receive revelation about other people, how to steer, how to lead, mm-hmm. right? So it's, and in that place, when we receive it, We've given up our own opinion in it. Because we understand this principle of moving away from getting something for me. No, that's not what it's all about. It's about giving something so that people may grow. Mm -hmm. That's how you move from having people just having people going to church and turning them into disciples. Mm What am I really talking about here is the love of God. Mm. That's what I'm really talking about. Mm. I'm just dissecting it a little bit more. Right? Mm. And you can only give yourself away if you're full of God's love. Mm. I know very well how inadequate my carnal is in many situations, if I did not have the love of God. Mm. Right? As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father. He's talking about the unison between the Father and the Son here. Semicolon. And I lay down my life for the sheep. There's a lot about laying down his life for the sheep, the washing of the disciples' feet, being a servant. Jesus talks a lot about these things. And the reason why we need to be very aware of this and, and, um, and abide and live in this and... Um, understand this principle is if we don't keep being a servant we will stumble because we have we we were born with sin jesus was not born with sin but we are born with sin we're sinners saved by grace right so this is a constant reference to being awake spiritually awake This is not, because it's not habitual for the carnal man, these things that I'm talking about. This is not an easy task for the carnal man, right? Mm -hmm. And like I said, this is, you just have to know this. This is just the way it is. God will always ask you to do something when it's very inconvenient in the carnal. Mm -hmm. Just, that's the law. It will always be inconvenient in the carnal. You're too tired. You don't feel like it. You don't want it. Can we wait tomorrow? No. Because God is asking you 
to do this now for reasons sometimes that you don't even know. Right? For the other person and for you in that moment when you least want to do it, God is asking you, yeah, but will you still do it because you're actually doing it for me? Sometimes when we are around people, we tend to forget that we are around Jesus. We just think that Jesus is inside of me. And that that's people out there, right? But what is Jesus talking about? He's talking about what you're doing to them, you're doing to me. So if you have a conflict with someone, resolve it. Right? You don't want to have a conflict with the Lord. Right? So there are many layers to what I'm talking about here, actually, I, as I hope you can hear. And I lay down my life for the sheep. Maybe we could practice that a little bit. Lord, I lay down my life for your sheep, for, your, for, for whatever situation that you're placing me in, right? I lay down my life. What does it mean to lay down your life? Jesus gave up everything that he had. He was with the Father. It was the most glorious place ever. He gave everything up and he came and he rescued you. He saved you who did not deserve it at all. And if you look at the carnal man compared to God, you will never understand what it is that he's really done. And so Jesus is asking us just to be a little kind as we are here on earth. <laughs> right? To pull people along into the church, right? And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. He's talking about the Gentiles. Them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Hallelujah. Therefore my Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it again. Now that's my point today. If you want to receive the blessing, you have to let it go. You have to let go. You have to be obedient into what God is asking you to do. In that situation, it's a day-by-day -day thing. In order to receive the life that he has for you. This is the blessing part I'm talking about. Right? So first you give. First you give up your life. First you give up your opinion. First you give up all your emotions in it. First you give up everything the way that, the job, that, the way that you thought it was going to be. Which were not. Give it all up to him. And then you'll see the blessing. Then the blessing is that you'll gain life. Mm. What is life? Mm. It's life in Christ. Mm. It's the glorious life in Him mm. and His promises for your life. Mm. This is the only way to gain any kind of spiritual authority. Mm. And let me tell you, here comes the great part. This is something God showed me. This is awesome. No, I'm just going to finish this. No one takes it from me. See, here he has the mandate. When you give up your life, when you lay down your life for someone or for a situation, there is no accusation. It's very clever. Mm -hmm. The way God set it up is very clever. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my Father, and His Spirit is abiding within us. Right? So, when we lay down our lives, it's an act of love. Do we agree on that? So love is the answer in that sense to everything. Because agape love, the love of God. Love is what God is made of. And he is by this untouchable. When you lay down your life for someone else or for a situation, you become untouchable. Can you see it? There can be no accusations in that sense that can touch you. Right? Because you're working under the principle of God. It's a law of God. It's a, this is so powerful. 
When you give, you don't hold on. Every time we hold on, the enemy has a foothold. That's my point in it too. Or hold on to, right? Either hold on or hold on to. You decide. Only in holding on, there is an open door invitation to lose. Think about this. God made the worlds by giving, through giving. He made it out of love. He gave. Was it necessary for him in that sense? No. Because he is full and content mm. in his own mm. because he is love. Mm. When you abide in his love, you are full and content in him. Mm. And by that, you become untouchable. Nothing can steal that love away within you. Agree? Nothing can take it away. And the Bible says so. I'm going to read it for you. By this, he created things that grow and reproduce. Now, my next point here is, when we do things out of love, when we do the things God is telling us to do, we're doing it out of love. And when we do it out of love, life is brought forth because it's from God. And we, we can reproduce. There is fruit. We bear fruit. Everything in the world, everything in nature reproduce. Mm -hmm. Everything in nature has the ability to reproduce. Think about that. That's abundance from God, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And he has implanted that as the same thing within us, right? Mm -hmm. So whatever you do in obedience when you give, you're actually sowing into your own reproduction mm -hmm. of life. Mm -hmm. Do you understand this? Mm -hmm. this, is, this is really good. Mm -hmm. Only love gives life. I'm not talking about worldly life or in love. The love, agape love of God. Only the agape love of God gives life. We can just look at the world, see what God has created. So only when we do and give out of love, we bring forth life and more and love. It's kind of a sustainability of love. And by that, love is. You cannot change love. You cannot alter love. What's most beautiful about love is that it's, it's so self-sufficient in itself. The love of God is so self-sufficient in itself. God loves you. He wants you in. But God in himself is perfect within himself because he is the complete image of of love and it's full when you're in love in him you are full it's so amazing you don't need anything you complete and by that nothing can touch you and nothing can steal it away Love is just as Jesus is, I am. It's, it's firm. It's secure. Because love is sufficient in itself. And the only sufficient love there is, is agape love, the, God, the love of God. And the, that is the only place where we can pour ourselves out and lay down our lives. Mm -hmm. I heard myself preach yesterday by a, 
sometimes I, I check, I don't do it very often, but sometimes I check, what is it that I'm saying? And I heard something, and I heard this about love. I was not preaching on this exactly because I haven't preached on it, but I got this revelation. Love is all that is so important. Love is all. Mm -hmm. It's full in measure. I just, yeah. I was reading about, I was preaching on something about love, in, but a little different in that sense. And then I just got this revelation. That's why Jesus talks about love is so important, mm -hmm. because you can't touch it. Mm -hmm. When you do things out of love, you are secure. Mm -hmm. You are secure in mm -hmm. Him. Mm -hmm. It's so important where your heart is. Because the hireling does not have the right heart. He will run when fear enters the door. He will not stand up and fight for the church. He will, the hireling will not stand up and fight for you. But the one who is Holy Spirit filled, he will stand up or she will stand up and fight for you. That's love. And they will fight with their lives. They will give it all. They will hold on to you even on those days where you're hopeless. It's true. Jesus is doing that. And we can only do that through his spirit, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Isn't that beautiful? That love is so compact, it's so full in itself that it can endure all things, just as Paul is writing. It hopes and it endures all things. Mm -hmm. Love suffers long and is kind. It costs to be around people. You don't get people into, <laughs> into uh, church for free in that sense. No. It's true. It costs. Love does not love does not envy mm. and it makes it simple because you are in full in him. Mm. You don't want anything. Love does not parade itself because the love of God, you know, it's not you. <laughs> you know, for sure, you know, you can't parade it. All but also because it's full in itself. Mm. In that sense, you can say love is humble, mm. yeah. right? It is not puffed up. And it's all, all of these things does not behave rudely, does not, seek, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks not evil. How is all that possible? Because you are self-sufficient in, 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 in that love. When you abide in that love, because of that self-sufficiency there is in love, you don't want anything else. It makes it quite simple. Does not rejoice in iniquity. That's right, because the love of God wants everybody to come into the love of God. So we become like that. Come on into God's house. This is the place, place to be, right? Come under his mighty wings, but rejoices in the truth. Because what is the truth? Love, <laughs> right? 
And out of that self, uh, self-sustainability and self-sufficiency in a good way, it bears all things, mm-hmm. believes all things. Mm-hmm. Because when you believe all things, it's birthed out of who you have a revelation of who God is. Mm-hmm. That's all what I've been talking about. He created this, then there's nothing that he can do. And you experience his love. And you experience his peace abiding in his love in situations where you never experienced any kind of peace. Mm. Therefore, you believe. Mm. Because it's not like you, you have to force yourself to believe anything. You just know. It's a believing of knowledge. Mm. I don't even know how to express this. Mm. You just know. Mm. Right? Believe all things. Of course. Because the power of love. Mm. Right? The power of Jesus believes all things, hopes all things. That's love, isn't it? That's life, isn't it? When you abide in life, you hope for all things. Right? When you're full of his life, you don't sit, no, I don't have hope for anything. You don't sit like that. You have hope for all things because that is abiding naturally in the nature of God. That's one of his fruits. Endures all things. Right? You know these things that you're going through that you know for sure that without God you cannot endure that conversation with that person for the 950th one time. I'm telling you the truth. It's true. And you can say it without anger. (laughs) It's true. Love never fails. Hallelujah. So when we lay down our lives, you will, that's what I talked about. You will not fail. You will not stumble. Because when we lay down our lives, it's an act of love. It's birthed out of an act of love. God had set it up so cleverly. Let me see if I can put it into words. God had set it up so cleverly that he's constantly humbling the carnal man. So it... So when we lay down our lives, it's not something that is very, how can I put it? Um, Something that the carnal can ride on as as in pride. Do you understand what I'm talking about? God has set it up so that we know for sure that this is not something that I just want to do in my carnal man, but I do it because in my heart I am compelled to do it. Mm -hmm. This is the way God has set it up. So that we know and and walk in the trail of love. Mm. And we can discern what really love is. This is good. Mm. So we can discern what life is. Not what we think is life. But what life is. What is truly life. And when we do that, God will will provide whatever it is that we need personally. Personally. But God is so interested in, because I just read it with Jesus, that he laid down his life for the sheep. Mm. So when we do that, when we are going after the lost, Mm. right? Mm. He is making sure and he is ensuring our lives. But when we focus on ourselves, we are not walking in the law of God. We are not ensuring our own lives. Mm. We're doing it in a carnal way. Mm. But when we do it the way of the Lord, we're, God is taking care of our lives. Mm. Yeah. This is a law of God. Mm. You cannot alter it. You cannot change it. We need to talk more about what is the law of God so we understand that this is just the way it is. It's not, and then there's no argument about it because then we understand this is just the way it is. 
Just like you don't walk out on the red light, I don't do that because I might get killed. It's the same here. So if I do these things, if I lay down my life, if I am obedient to God in those areas where he's asking me to do things, you are sowing into the future blessings of your own life. And you are sowing into... Uh, um, oops, lost that trail. Anyway, you're sowing into the future blessing of your own life and you're doing it the way God wants you to do it. You're following his precepts. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will fail. Everything else changes. That's what he's talking mm -hmm. about. Yeah. The one thing that never, ever, 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 ever changes is God's love. Mm -hmm. Prophecies come, prophecies go. People, no, 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 right? But the one thing that is holding everything together, mm -hmm. everything together, mm -hmm. that's God. That's love. Everything is, is bound together by love. Everything in the world is bound together by love. It's not just the power. Because if you look into what that power is, that power is God. And what is God? He is love. He's ensuring that if the elements are not flying around, pretty awesome to think about and when you experience it you'll just be like wow that's awesome God they will fail where their tongues they will cease where there is knowledge it will vanish away everything else therefore Jesus is so keen in on that we seek love mm. Love is the radar that you should look out for in your own life. Mm. Who can I pour out some love on? Mm. How do I do that? How can I serve someone? That's how you do it. Do you want to do it sometimes? Absolutely not. And keep serving when people are rude. I don't want to serve him anymore. <laughs> just keep going back just keep going back it's good for your carnal man mm -hmm. <laughs> it's true mm -hmm. let me read another one here Ephesians 3, verse 16, that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, mm -hmm. that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love, mm -hmm. that you may know the love of God for you, first for you, don't preach love if you don't know the love of God for you. Don't walk around saying to people if you don't know it. I'm, I know I'm stating a little contra uh, contradictions here because I also said just go out and pour out love on people. Do that, but do it. Don't talk about it. Because in that you'll get to understand more also about the love of God. Because you'll see his precepts and orders and laws set in motion when you do it. They're, you're setting it into action. I don't know how to express it. And the blessing might not come at the point that you thought or might not be the blessing that you thought or at that time or whatever it is, but it's always more than what you think. And this I know for sure. That whatever huge problem you have, that whatever you give and start being a servant for other people, not for your own sake, but just really being a servant for other people, not being a hireling, not pretending to be a good shepherd, forget all that. 
Just be honest with yourself. Just be honest with God, right? But when you do that, the biggest problem that you have, that's the one God is going to attack on your life first to resolve. Mm -hmm. It's so pretty. That's awesome. You know, God is awesome. Mm -hmm. What I just said there, that was really good. Mm -hmm. Rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, and the depth, and the height to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. This is so awesome a scripture, isn't it? This is the foundation. Now to know him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Right? This is, this is who we serve. Exceedingly abundantly. Whatever we can imagine. Ask or think. That's the grandness of the love of God for you. Not just God is grand. That's not what it's about. It's about, it's for you. Sometimes God says to me, all I have is yours. He wants me to understand this in depth. Right? All I have is yours. Think about that. All he has and all he is is yours. And he wants you to have it because he laid down his life. Now, when you lay down your life for someone, you want them to understand because you invested with your life for someone. Right? And here's another great thing. When you do it like that and people still walk away, you're not hurt in that sense. It won't enter your heart because you did it through the Spirit of God. Therefore, it's important to have your heart position steered in the right direction all the time. Therefore, it's important to read the word. Read the word, read the word. I don't care what you see in the spiritual realm. If you don't know the word, I don't care. It doesn't matter. It doesn't count one sibo. It doesn't. You have to know the word. The word is Jesus, right? So when you do these things and you do them, you, you give up your life, you lay down your life for someone, you are constantly ensuring your own life, ensuring your own spiritual life. When we do it on, your, on our own, we're opening the spiritual doors for the enemy so he can come in and talk to us. This is what is happening on the, in the spiritual realm. Therefore, I'm going to say it again. I'm just, I'm just saying the same thing over and over, just in many different ways, right? But therefore, it's important to register, to constantly check in on your heart's position, right? Because if your heart's position is, move, is I want to do this right thing, but it's birthed out of fear for man, for the other person, whatever it is, not right heart position, you're hiring them. Mm -hmm. If you want to be the shepherd for someone and do something for someone, it simply has to be that you're doing it, I'm going to lay down my life for you, Lord. It's, this is for you. And it, to some small degree, it always kind of hurt a little bit in the carnal. That's a good sign. Mm -hmm. Where you just, oh, no, I'm a little tired of this, Lord, you know. Right? And God will always send you someone to purge you more. Mm -hmm. When you give to someone, it's not for them, it's for you. Mm -hmm. It's always for you. Mm -hmm. When you give, whatever it is that you give, it's always for you. 
but we don't see it like that. Especially not when we give, when it's kind of a little, I don't want to. That's really for you. That's a giving for you. For you to grow. For you to be purged. And when we do it in the place of where it, it really stretches us on the inner, when we do it in that place, uh, we, we can, you can be sure there's a blessing on the way. For sure. Because... God operates not out of, I need this, so uh, I'm going to sow something over here so that this will happen. This is not the operation of God. God is asking you to do something over here that has nothing to do with your situation. Okay? So he's asking you to do something over here, but that will infect and affect your heart's position so that you will reap what it is that you need. But those two things usually never have anything to do with each other. Usually never. Mm -hmm. This is spiritual laws I'm talking mm -hmm. about here. But I laid on my life over here for that person, for someone, for a thing, whatever it is. And in my inner man and in my own struggle over here, I'm struggling with this, which has nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. But you're investing by you investing in some people over here, by laying your life down over here, you are sowing into a resolvement in your own dealings. Mm. This is the order of God. Mm. Mm. Therefore, it's important to read the word because this is, this is something that we just don't know because it's so contrary to the world, to how people operate in the world and all of that. Sometimes I've been doing things and I don't know, it has nothing to do with anything, but I knew in the moment that I did it, that because I did that, that would be resolved. Mm -hmm. Right? So we lay down our lives and we <laughs> and make sure and ensuring ourselves that we are positioning our hearts in the love of Christ. Therefore, it's important. We don't like to talk about love because it's, you know, it's not really, I mean, sermons about love, yeah, you know. But because it's, it's so, it, it moves so contrary to the carnal man. Mm -hmm. It's really, the, the love of God is truly, in that sense, an enmity to the carnal man. Mm -hmm. The carnal man needs a lot of training and a lot of whipping <laughs> in order for it to learn to obey. Just to obey. It takes something to obey when we don't want it. Mm -hmm. When we don't want to do it. When we don't feel like doing it. When we're too tired. When we just want to hang out. When we don't want to... It takes training in the carnal. Mm. It takes a lot of purging. Yeah. There's truly a spiritual awakening in this, and it's a step by step. Mm. Truly, 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 truly is. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. Because now you are no longer darkness. You can do this because you now are full of his light. For once you were one, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of lights. For the fruit of the Spirit is all goodness, righteousness, and truth. 
finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. Mm. It's not say finding out what is acceptable to you. Mm. <laughs> it's all about Him. Mm. Let me put it another way. It's all about love. Mm. Mm. It's all about love. Think about when Jesus gave his life. He thought about you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's seen everything about you and knows in that sense you don't deserve it. But he still came after you and he still gave up everything that he had. And he dressed himself in a carnal man. And he was misunderstood and misinterpreted and mis everything. But he still did it so that you today could be with him. Now that's really a blessing that he received, isn't it? All the people, brothers and sisters, that he's constantly receiving into his kingdom. This is why we lay down our lives. Mm. This, is, this is why we bless people. This is why we do things. Mm. It's a constant sowing into the future. Mm. And by that, not just for you, but for, but for the kingdom of God. Mm. It does not state anything about you emotionally in that sense. It does not state that. that what's really important is God. And when we come to understand that, we'll see that the things, that the plans that he has for us are far better than the ones that we can imagine. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. This is how we're going to be a blessing for ourselves and other people. Let's take communion on this. Lord, so we thank you, Father, and I ask you, Father, that you will bless this string and this bread. Just as Jesus asked you at the Last Supper, he asked for a, bread, a blessing over the drink and the uh, bread. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that we can partake in your love, partakers in your love, sharers in your love, sharers in your kingdom, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for having such good plans for us. Thank you for loving us so much. You could have easily just passed us by. You could have easily not just come down here to get us. You could have easily done something else. But you chose and you, you, you kept your promise with Noah. And you came down and you ensured that we were not lost. Thank you. We praise you and we worship you for that, Lord. Mm -hmm. You may eat the bread. Thank you, Jesus, for going through all those things that you went through in order to redeem us.
you may drink. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're working within us. Thank you, God, for your patience. Thank you that your love is so perfect, whole, and complete that we can't offend it. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 